Welcome to PCMRP's video tutorial series. The purpose of this video is to provide an overview of PCMRP's Stockroom module. Selecting modules in Stockroom displays the Stockroom menu screen. The new option allows users to enter a number of different types of Stockroom transactions, such as issuing parts to manufacturing and receiving back completed assemblies. The I option issues parts and subassemblies from stores to manufacturing for a specified sales or work order. This option will decrement the on-hand quantity and increase the quantity in width. The R option receives back completed assemblies for manufacturing. This function will decrement the quantity in width based on what was issued to WIP and increment the quantity of finished goods. This process is referred to as back flushing. If the world was a simple place, there are, would only be two functions a stockroom module would need to use. Unfortunately, the world is not a simple place. So let's go over some of the other functions that your stockroom people will need to use. The L option issues parts to a sales or work order because the original parts were defective or not listed in the BOM when the sales or work order was created. The M option fills the shortage for a single stockroom transaction. The F option automatically fills shortages for all stockroom transactions that can be filled from the current on-hand stock. The P option allows users to pick and fill shortages for multiple stockroom transactions that can be filled from current on-hand quantities. Here we see we have two shortages. They can be filled with the current on-hand quantity. A user can drive on-hand quantities negative with the M and F options. That is why we recommend using the P and not the M and F options. The B option transfers parts from one inventory warehouse to another. If I select an inventory part, such as a bearing, I can move it from one area to another. However, if I select an assembly, such as a wheel assembly, I can move the assemblies as a whole or its component parts from one area to another. The U option receives back unused parts for manufacturing and puts them back in stock. You can select to reduce the quantity required and the quantity issued and not carry a shortage for that sales or work order or you can reduce just the quantity issued only and carry a shortage for that sales or work order. The A option allows users to adjust inventory. Once you select the part number and enter the quantity, you can select the reason, such as scrap for the in, in adjustment. You can create your own adjustment listings using configuration, settings and utilities, option 52. Accounting can later then run an accounting report. All stockroom transaction adjustments for a specified month to get a total cost of the adjustments during that specified time period. Selecting Modules, Stockroom, New, and the T option will return all parts and assemblies issued from a sales or work order from WIP back into the Stockroom. It will also change the sales or work order status to not being issued to manufacturing. This function can be used when the wrong sales order or work order is issued, or if the customer changes his mind and cancels or changes the original sales or work order. If the customer reduces the quantity of the sales or work order, you could return the original issue and issue again, this time using the sales order's new quantity. Now that we've covered the different stockroom transactions you can make, let's return to the main stockroom menu by selecting Modules and Stockroom. The Edit option allows users to view and edit historical stockroom transactions. I will select Stock Transaction Number 1. Editing a transaction reveals the sales and work order number, who issued it, the transaction type, the parent assembly, the quantity required, the quantity issued, and the quantity returned as part of the completed assemblies. Stockroom reports can be displayed or printed by selecting Modules, Stockroom, and Reports. The Report option provides stockroom reports such as all parts issued to a specified sales or work order. I'll select just all transactions. Here you can see the quantity required, the quantity issued, and the shortages, and the total cost of the parts that have been issued. You can check the parts available to build a quantity of a specified assembly by selecting Modules, Stockroom, and Check Availability. Here we can check the availability to build 10 rear wheel assemblies. I will select the rear wheel assembly. I will enter a quantity of 10. I'll select the display and press the OK button. This report shows that we are short five rear axles, and it'll cost us $5,000 to purchase them. 
In that manner, we'll be able to build 10 uh, rear wheel assemblies. I'll return to the main menu. I can check maximum number of assemblies that I can build with an existing stock by selecting modules, stock room, and maximum potential build. Here we can check to see how many wheel assemblies we can build with the current on-hand stock. I'll select listed assemblies. I'll click on the new button. I'll select the wheel assembly. And I'll click on the OK button. I'll select display and hit the OK button. This report shows that we can build 250 wheel assemblies. I will return to the main menu now. Let's see, I can convert parts to assemblies by selecting modules, stock room, and convert parts to assemblies. The convert parts to assemblies option allows us to issue to manufacturing and receive back completed assemblies with one click of a button. We do not recommend this option because it does not tie the stock room transactions to a sales or work order. And if parts are short, it will drive those parts negative. I'm going to return to the main menu again. If I select modules, stock room, and index, this allows PCMRP to rebuild the stock room indexes. This option would only be used in the highly unlikely occurrence that PCMRP cannot find a stock room record due to a broken index file. This option deletes the stock room indexes and rebuilds the indexes from scratch. Selecting Modules, Stock Room, and Remove Mark Records allows users to remove all stock room records that have been marked for deletion from disk. Selecting Modules, Stock Room, and Remove All Over X Years Old will remove all stock room records over X years old. Please note that the government requires businesses to retain the last seven years of records. Well, I hope I've shown you how PCMRP's Stock Room module can help your company efficiently manage your stock room and your manufacturing floor. Thank you.